Hi everyone, in this Blender tutorial I want to show you how we can use the Array modifier to create this wonderful organic copper sculpture set on a stainless steel base and lit by uh, the sun lamp um, and set inside this um, matte board uh, containment <laughs> or photo studio if you will. And let me mod uh, Here's another view of it right here, um, looking down from overhead. Um, what I like are the organic shapes that are arranged in this radial symmetry um, and that r reflect light from one to the other with this great copper color. So let's get started and let me minimize this. Let me delete this here. And very good. I could uh, start with a new uh, startup file here, so we're all together on the same page. Um, and what I'm going to do is scale this one. So, uh, and we're going to scale it along the Y axis, which is this green axis here. So if you hit the letter X, I mean S, Y, and point zero four, and then left click or hit enter. And then we're going to make it taller, so I'm going to hit S, Z, and pull this up like that. Now what we want to do is um, add a subdivision, or loop cuts to this to subdivide it. So I'm going to um, hit Control R in edit mode. Let me deselect Control R and scroll wheel pushing it upward to give yourself oh three six subdivisions or so left click twice to set it and then hit um, well I'm going to see if I want to hit A or yet or not um, so let me just hit S for a second and see what happens if I okay don't, don't like that. Um, so I'm going to deselect everything and select just one in the middle here. Um, going down into the face, I'm sorry, edge edit button here. Instead of the vertex or the face, we're clicking the middle button and then right click in here and holding shift, right click here. And then I'm going to click down at the bottom um, right here to enable proportional editing. And what I'm going to do is distort this like this. Um, and let's take this one. Oops, sorry right click on that edge and then right click on this edge and distort it the other direction maybe like that this is a little bit different than the one that I just did but this is kinda neat right click on this edge right click on this edge and just pull it out like that okay um, okay um, so, um, next we want to select all four um, edges, um, and one way is to just right-click and then rotate around and keep clicking, and an easier way is if you hit the letter Z, and we go into wireframe mode, and then if you hit B, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here, B as in boy, go into box select mode, left-click and drag around these four vertices like this. You see now all four edges are selected <clears throat> and then I'm gonna hit Z again so I can see what I'm doing and I wanna scale it on the green Y axis to make it fatter through here and down here at the bottom I've enabled proportional editing and what that'll do is sort of blend in the scaling downward as and, and make, make this whole thing more proportional so I'm going to hit S and Y 
and then I'm going to pull and it's going to fatten and you see how all the sort of nearby vertices are moving along with it as well. So left click to set that and so we have this fattened section through here. And if you want to move that back in a little bit, the whole thing, we can do that too. Alrighty, uh, now to make it a little more organic, I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier. Let me hit A to deselect and come over to the wrench in the upper right and click Add Modifier and choose Subdivision Surface. And then under View and Render, I'm going to click this up to 3 and 3. Uh, that's kind of good. Um, I want to scale in the top and bottom a little bit too to give it a little bit of shape here. So I'm going to hit B for, oops, that was C, escape B for box select again and select these vertices and hit S and just drag it inward like that to give that a nice round shape. Um, and then at the bottom hit A to deselect, do the same thing, B for your box select, click, oops, didn't get the back one. Let me hit Z, A to deselect, and then B for my box select. Good. And then S, and I'm going to scale it in again. So I'm getting this kind of cool organic uh, shape here. Z to go back to solid mode and then hit apply here on your oops got to go into back to object mode to apply the that and then lastly we'll just clean up the shading a little bit by hitting the smooth button on the left here click and we have this shape great so now let's set it in a, a circular array and uh, to do that easily hit number 7 on your keypad and number 5 to go into top ortho view. should say top ortho on the top left here. And move this to the right offset by about half a box or so. And leaving the 3D cursor right where it is, we're going to switch back to edit mode and I'm going to click a to select it and then over on the left here we're going to click the spin button so when I spin it what it's doing is by default creating nine steps at 90 degrees so I'm going to up the angle here to 360 and then I'm going to dial up the steps just by scrubbing it that means clicking and dragging on it until I get a number that uh, has separate units 12, 16, 13, maybe I'll give it 12. Yep, yeah, that looks good. Uh, so tab back to object mode and then scroll out a little bit. This is nice. Um, if you want these thicker, we could try adding a new modifier, which is a solidify, and click that, and then dial up the thickness here, just to give them a little bit of uh, weight and thickness. Okay, uh, that's 0.053 here. Okay, good. Next, I'm going to hit number one, and go to front ortho view, left click down here to add a plane. So shift A mesh plane and then hit S to scale it and the number 15 and enter. Um, and then pull this up just so it's touching the bottom of the, the units here. Good. Now I'm going to zoom out and I'm taking the point of view of the camera and the light. You see I'm kind of looking through the camera here. And what I want to do to these rear elements is to pull them up higher to create the uh, studio setting. So I'm going to hit A to deselect all and then go back into edit mode here. 
click the middle button again, A to deselect, right click this edge, holding shift, right click this edge, zoom out even more using your middle scroll wheel, E for extrude on the Z axis, so E, Z, and then just pull it up like that, nice and big. Alrighty. Um, next, let's set up the lamp. And we have to actually, let's, before we do that, go back to object mode where we'll set up the lamp anyway and hit number one again on your keypad. What I didn't do, I'm going to right click on this object and raise it up. I didn't put a little podium under here. I think that's a cool detail. So I'm going to left click to set my 3D cursor here. I'm in front or for the view. Shift A, mesh cube, and scale it on the Z axis. So that was SZ. And then scale again freely just to make this the size here. Oops, and let's bring it back in. So hit number one to see it from this side, number three to see it from this side, and it's looking pretty good. So now um, I'm going to hold down shift and connect the sculpture with the base and use the blue arrows to move it down right to um, where it starts to disappear into the the box just about like that. All right, good. So in object mode, now right click on the lamp and come on over to the lamp properties, this little tab next to the checkerboard. And at this point, take Blender Render at the very top and go into Cycles Render. And for the lamp, um, I created a sun lamp this time. And I put the size of it down to uh, point, maybe 0.24, and then click Use Nodes and make the strength 6, Enter. Um, and just to see how the light is doing, I'm going to, next to the object mode here, there's this small orb, click that, and it's viewport shading, and click on Rendered. And let's just see how much, how the light is working. Okay, it's a bit bright, so I'm going to take the strength down. Uh, there's 3.3. .3. I think that might work out better. Okay, and then let's go back to solid mode here. Next, I need to set up materials for the sculpture itself and the base. So, let's, t let's do the sculpture. Click on this orb next to the triangle, and click Use Nodes, and instead of Diffuse, choose Glossy, and click on the Color tab, and set it for a mild orange-yellow like this, not too dark, and then Roughness, a point to Enter. Now click on the uh, pedestal base and click New. I'm going to leave this white and then again click Glossy and make the roughness 0.1. Great. Now once again, oh, now we'll set up our camera viewpoint. So when I hit 0, this is what the camera is seeing. And in order to adjust my positioning here, I have to hit N which brings up this menu where I lock the camera to view. Click on that button and then hit N to get rid of that. Now I can zoom and pan looking through the camera. And once again, I'm going to go back to rendered and pick a point of view here. So I can pan by holding shift. I can um, rotate around like this. Um, when I click on the camera, I'm going to change the proportion of the XY axis here. So I'm going to take my X axis to the left around 1600 and bring up my Y axis a little bit and 
pan this over. I'm kind of liking this backlighting here. Zoom in a little bit. Great. So uh, we're ready to go with a, a final render on this. So uh, let's see. I'm going to move this over. Actually, I'll leave it here. Um, so uh, here's the render menu. Down under sampling, click to open that. Put your sample amount up to 250. Enter. And on the next tab over, that's the rendered layer settings. Click on denoising. And at this point, we're ready to take a look. And I'm going to hit F12 to start the rendering process. And I'll pause the video. OK, uh, that render took almost five minutes, as you can see up in the upper left here and I uh, used a peak memory of 85 megabytes. <laughs> so as you can see, this is a very intensive operation. Um, as I look at this, I see a couple of little glitches on it. And also, I'm seeing that the um, kind of matte finish is not as glossy as I had hoped. So I'm going to redo this. Let me show you how that happens. Instead of a roughness of 0.2, let's, let's reduce that. So I'm going to hit Escape to get out of this render here. And um, yeah, notice that in this view I couldn't quite tell how mad it was going to be. And I'm going to come back to solid here. And right click here. And on the materials tab, take the rough, roughness down. Mm, point zero 0.08. Let's try that. And I'm going to rotate Oops, come on. <laughs> Rotate this around to see other points of view. And um, hit F12 again. And see you on the other side. Let me hit pause again. OK, um, I like this version a bit better. I've got more reflections. And uh, it's not, not quite so matte here getting these specular highlights, and each uh, unit is reflecting into the one right next to it. Um, and I like this little reflection off of the base here uh, in the shadow. So um, be sure to save your image, hit F3 on your keyboard, and um, name it, and know that where it's going into Documents, and And that's pretty much it. So, see you in the next video.